to get over you
I try this time I again. Hey guys, I'm here today with Elixir. Luca, how are you today? Hey Mike, thank you for having me. Oh, of course. Super nervous at the moment, <laughs> but fine. Uh, okay, awesome. Um, we're doing a special um, show here, special interview here about your new album, uh, Beyond the Emotions. It's a new 12, 12 track album. Um, so tell me, what was it like putting this album together? Um, how was to put it together? Well, at times it was super nice, other times it was super stressful. Uh, there were some songs uh, that uh, didn't really get the proper direction for like months. That I had the idea, but uh, I couldn't find uh, the vocals uh, or I couldn't really develop it. Uh, I just knew what I wanted uh, it to be and what I wanted it uh, to represent. Then the journey to its completion uh, was always um, up and downs as everything. I think it's pretty normal. Um, it's a concept album and um, Okay, I, I want to explain this a little bit. When we started the Elixir project uh, together with uh, my girlfriend, she does all of our cover arts, uh, all the graphics. She will also sing in the future. For now, she's just doing the artworks. We wanted to create something that would uh, not just be just music or just her, but to send some positive messages if possible out and um, the first album uh, looking for the sound was more of a challenge uh, with myself uh, as a producer because it was my first ever production and i really wanted to see where i could uh, go with a start of a path but from the second one this one is the second we wanted to start uh, uh, with the core ideas of the project so for positive messages and we thought what's more important uh, in the world, especially in our world today, if not the concept of love, which I think uh, we kind of miss a lot of time because we are submerged with problems and issues. And that's what, where it all started. Awesome. That's really cool. When I, when I first um, read the titles, it almost seemed like there was a story behind it, and I'm sure there is. With each there is a story. Yeah, yeah um, it actually, the whole album is a um, complete love story from start to endless. <laughs> awesome. So from the very, very first moment, uh, a guy looks, sees a girl until mm -hmm. forever. They're up there. And uh, we've tried to represent every single aspect uh, of the journey and every single aspect of love itself. That's awesome. So I should have mentioned before, we also have here uh, Demi K. How are you, Demi? Thanks for being here today. Thank you for having me, guys. Hello. Also, Karin. How are you, Karin? KZL. Thanks for mm -hmm. taking the time. Hey, thanks for having me on the show again. Oh, of course. And also, uh, Justin, to the stars we return. How are you today? Hey, how's it going? Doing Thanks, great, man. Guys. How are you? Thanks for having us. Of course. So that everyone um, is also part of the uh, album as well, too. And there are others as well that couldn't be here today, uh, including Neon, Liquid Modern, um, and I believe Cosmic Kiss. One of the other tracks is called My Weakness, and I believe that was To the Stars We Return. That was a collab project. So how was it like, guys, working on that together? Who starts? I start. Okay. Um, my weakness is uh, probably the darkest song of the whole album and um, for a reason because it love is all good and fine and dreamy and happy not always there are times where we can actually feel weakened by the feelings we have for other person 
So that kind of was the whole idea behind the, the composition of the track. And um, it was totally by chance, I have to say, if this collab came to be, because I was looking for um, vocalist, a male vocalist, I really wanted it to be male for this song and I could not find one for a lot of time. And I think what happened is Justin uh, on Twitter, I think, uh, he just uh, put out the tweet about, uh, hey, if anyone wants a collab, uh, this is a song of mine, there was some audio there, uh, let me know. So I immediately reached out <laughs> and we started to talk. Uh, uh, from that, so totally by chance, but I feel lucky that it happened because uh, he is super cool, super good, uh, amazing artist, amazing uh, person as a whole. Like, I mean, everyone here, I'm actually kind of blown away that I managed to collab with all of them because, as I say, I am uh, kind of a new producer here in the scene, and many of these people I am actually a fan of. I mean, Dimi is amazing and everyone knows him in the scene. I'm a big fan of him from a lot of time. Karin is the absolute queen of all radio hosts <laughs> in the scene to have seen. And Justin is an amazing artist. I mean, probably one of the most underrated, I think, out there because he can do it all. He can really do it all from music to lyrics to vocals. And he's just amazing. Yeah, it's awesome. I remember, um... Not too long ago, we had a, uh, Justin's uh, new video out on the show as well, too, which was an awesome, awesome video. So, Justin, what was it like working with uh, Luca and Elixir? Well, first of all, thanks for that uh, ego boost, man. <laughs> it means a lot. Thank you very much. But um, the feeling is absolutely mutual. Um, uh, yeah, he's absolutely right. Basically, what happened was I was in between albums. Um, I just put out chapter one of Lonely Astronaut, and I was trying to um, keep myself busy in between albums. I wanted a little bit of a break uh, between jumping into ta chapter two. Um, so I wanted to do some vocals, and um, my Lonely Astronaut series doesn't have any vocals to it, and I kind of miss doing vocals. I come from a singer-songwriter background, um, so I'm as well relatively new uh, to the synth scene. Um, so I wanted to kind of delve into um, singing, but with, you know, synth music and try my hand at that. Um, so I put out a tweet saying, you know, if anybody is looking for vocals uh, on a song or on their album, uh, I'd love to give it a shot. And um, my big thing with music is always learning. Um, so I wanted to try something that's kind of outside of my comfort zone and outside of the kind of music that I created. Um, so um, when Luca reached out um, and sent me the track, told me exactly what he was looking for. It was a piece of cake because he was so descriptive on exactly what he wanted, um, how he wanted it to sound, what he wanted the lyrics to be like, um, but still gave me free range to kind of um, take my personal experience on the topic that he wanted. Um, and write the lyrics about that. So I think it took me maybe 20 minutes when he sent me the music uh, to s start to kind of get a melody in my head. Um, and then I ran with that. And, you know, we all have experience with, with love, with lost, with every feeling that comes uh, along with love and new love and the excitement and the nervousness and all that kind of stuff. Um, so I kind of took the, the personal experiences I had from my past and put it into that. Um, so it was a, a really simple process, um, but you know, we kind of just went back and forth, uh, sent him what I had initially, maybe had a few notes here and there, um, you know, kind of did some re-recording and, um, you know, came to be. Um, and I'm really excited about it being the darkest track because I kind of have, you know, that, that dark side to me all the time. So um, as soon as I found out it was the darkest one, I was like, yeah, I'm in, let's do it. <laughs> really awesome. Again, that was my weakness um, uh, that you guys had the, the track on. We'll actually play it now. Uh, this way everyone could hear it as well too. Yeah. 
Hey guys, again, that was My Weakness uh, collab on the new album, Beyond the Emotions, which is out now through Retro Reverb Records. Uh, to the Stars We Return and Elixir. Um, one of the next tracks is uh, called Endless Emotion. And Luca, that was with Demi K, I believe, right? Yes. Awesome. Demi added so much to that track. It's crazy. <laughs> so, Endless Emotion. Uh, that is the closing track of the album. And it was actually the first one I composed <laughs> for the album. But the thing is, um, it wasn't meant to be a synth track. I actually composed that uh, um, thinking of an orchestral uh, slash cinematic kind of arrangement. And uh, the simple notes that um, act like uh, the fundamentals of everything else in that song are um, based on an interval i think in english is called the perfect interval that basically goes right with almost every chord of a scale and it's usually used for orchestral ostinato now i love the emotion that that those simple three four notes gave uh, over the course so much that I really wanted to find the perfect place to use that song on. And when I um, started to work on this uh, album, I knew that uh, I had to use it at some point over here. So I started to build uh, all of the other sounds on top, but it was still missing something. And for this one uh, track, uh, I really didn't uh, feel like vocals where the right path to go because it had to be more lush, more um, ethereal, maybe more um, abstract than anything that the uh, voice and vocals and lyrics could uh, describe. And it just happened that uh, Dimi is an amazing human being and he accepted to collab on that with uh, his guitar and his skills. and. Uh, I don't know what that track would have become without him. I, I actually not even sure I would have used it in the album if it wasn't for him collaborating on that and adding that level of depth to it. Wow, that's awesome. Right. So, Demi, how was it? What was it like coming up with the the track together? Yeah, it's. Uh... The thing is that uh, we look at tracks from different perspectives because uh, Luca said it, it was more uh, compositional, uh, classical or whatever for him. For, for me it, remind me, it reminded me of post-rock. I immediately had a guitar there. It was like I, had, I was listening to something from God is an astronaut or uh, Sigur Ross. And I'm like, yes. Yes, that might work. That, I, I have some guitar ideas. Let's hope that uh, Luca can uh, can feel good with the ideas and they fit to his uh, vision. And that's how I went about it. I think uh, I sent you Luca some ideas, and we uh, went from there. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Absolutely. We. Um, okay. Something that I want to make clear. Um, talking since we are talking about collaborations here. Uh, I have a very personal idea of what a collaboration should be in music because to me a collaboration is two or more people coming together to create something that one could have probably never been able to create alone. That means that uh, I don't really like it to give uh, strict orders on what to do. I, I like uh, the people I collaborate with to be... Um, free to express uh, what they feel about the track we are doing. It's our track, not just my track with someone else in. And so, of course, uh, there is an, uh, an idea in the back and uh, uh, we talk about it like it happened with Dimi. I think he sent me three uh, or four, maybe, possible ways to go um, at some points uh, in, and some were uh, super nice some uh, maybe I thought it could have done a little bit different but we talked uh, and maybe d done some slight changes uh, to a couple of things uh, but um, I think uh, we managed to 
put both of us in it. Uh, at least I hope I wasn't uh, too restrictive on his ideas. <laughs> uh, if, if I can add on that, I believe the best collaborations in, uh, uh, happen when you leave your ego outside. We come in and we serve the track. If my ideas don't work, they go out. We leave them out. And that's what I enjoy. I like when we have a f- final product, final music, that both we are happy with it. We listen to it and we say, okay, that was very cool. That was very nice. And what it's baffling to, to me is that Luca said that that track might not have appeared in the album. In my opinion, when I first heard it, I thought, this gives me ideas immediately. I feel things without me adding it. Forget me. I feel things with this track. Why people do that? Why producers do that? They, they are ready to throw away so, so cool stuff, so, uh, such cool music. That's the weird thing that I see with many people and with Luca. He said, I might not use it. Why? It's beautiful. That's the, that's the, the insane thing that I, I think. Forget my stuff. I added what I had and we worked both on it to hopefully create something that it's that other people can relate to. We are definitely, I, I can talk for Luca for sure, I'm sure, that we both love the track, what we did on it. Yeah? Oh yeah, uh, I love it. I actually, from time to time, I put it when I, as I work or study and I just put it on loop, it's just beautiful. Also, I when, when I say it, I might not use it for this album, it doesn't mean I throw it away. I would have used it for something else, maybe. <laughs> okay, that's a good way to go, okay. <laughs> that's awesome, guys. Again, that was uh, Endless Emotion. We'll, uh, we'll play that right now as well, too.
Okay, guys, that was Endless Emotion. Uh, again, the collaboration of Elixir and Demi K on the new album, Beyond the Emotions. Um, one more track we're going to talk about is um, Two Long Years. And Luca, that was with Karin, I believe, right? KZL. Yes. Dream come true. Awesome. Okay. Now, um, first of all, it was so exciting for me when she agreed to help out on the track because KZL is actually my absolute favorite show in the scene scene. And every time I have the time, I, I go and also every time I have the time, yeah, my English is not super well. <laughs> I go and listen to it. And it was the first show I also really loved from the very first time I heard it. So uh, it was just amazing. Now, that track is another of those tracks where that didn't really have a direction for quite a lot of time. I mean, doing the music was super easy for me. It was actually one of the tracks that I actually produced uh, uh, the fastest time of the whole album. But I just felt it wasn't complete. So I started to experiment with it. And um, the first thing I actually did was uh, to go on YouTube and sample um, love, a uh, talk about love, uh, just very rough, just to see on how it would come out. And I, from that moment, I started to think that maybe I wanted um, a speech on top, not see, not uh, sing a singing voice. And. Um, at the beginning, uh, I asked uh, around some friends I have made in the same community that suggested some people that, but they were always uh, too busy to actually help out on that. So the tracks remained in, uh, on a standby for like two months, maybe. And then I thought, who has an amazing voice in the scene scene? And I was like, Karin has an amazing voice in the scene scene. Maybe I should ask if she would like to, to appear on that. And so when she say, oh yeah, absolutely. And I explained to her uh, what the track uh, was about. Uh, and I was just super, super happy. One thing I really want to mention is, like I said before, I like to give people the freedom to express themselves. That doesn't mean that, that I don't offer to help if needed, because I always uh, ask if you need the help uh, in writing or whatever, uh, we do our best to help out. She wanted to write it all um, herself. She is the author of the amazing speech that is on the song. She wrote every single word. She recorded every single word and she's just amazing like that. And she just took the track and brought it to a whole other level that is amazing. Also, what a collab is about to me. Take one track and uh, elevate it to a whole other level by putting yourself in it. That's really cool. So, Karin, how was your experience creating this track? 16, well, I've done voiceovers for other artists in the scene, but none quite this long. I think the longest has been like a minute long. I did an intro for a, a, a song a couple years ago. It was my first voiceover. This is the first time I've been asked to provide the whole track, which was great. He said he wanted a, a love letter. And I said, well, what if I what if I did it as like a diary entry, sort of? He said that was fine, because my idea was, um, see, a lot of uh, post-pandemic music has been coming out. So the journal entries, they're, it's a, it consists of two entries. Um, it's uh, it's about falling in love during the pandemic and having the borders shut down on you and uh, keeping you two apart at a distance for two long years. What I'm comfortable calling this for now. That's awesome. That's a really cool story. The track is great as well too. That I'm refusing. Um, so you did the vocals, Karen, and Luca did pretty much the the instrumental part of the song. Yeah, he sent me the instrumental part and said, here's where I want talking, and then there's going to be a break, and if you're up for it, there's a little more talking at the end here. I said, sure, I could do all that. And so I, I wrote two journal entries and recorded it all. He clipped out some stuff that might have been excessive or wouldn't fit or whatever. 
and it, it sounded great at the end. Like you just polished it. That's really cool. Let's uh, let's play it right now. I know it was just on your show as well too. The new uh, the new some songs from the album. We'll play yeah. two long years right now. November 16th, 2019. I'm having thoughts that I wish I wasn't having alone at the departure's gate. After having the time of my life in a foreign city, I was just looking through the photos that we took over the weekend, and I saw your face, your eyes, so full of life. And I felt that spark spark that had twinkled here and there all weekend long behind the neon fray. Every time you showed kindness, compassion, generosity, gratitude. I have very deep gratitude for you. That's what I'm comfortable calling this for now. And I'm well aware that I'm refusing to acknowledge the truth. I've already said my goodbyes. It's too late for this now. But with you, goodbye will always be until next time. So next time I see you,
Okay, guys, again, that was two long years. Um, collaboration with Elixir and KZL. I'm sure you've heard it before on KZL show as well, too. Um, again, let me just backtrack. Um, we heard some of the new tracks off the album, Beyond the Emotions, uh, To the Stars We Return. We heard um, uh, My Weakness, I apologize. That was the collab. And any closing remarks, guys, you have on that track? I just want to say uh, thanks to Luca for the opportunity. Um, like I said, it, for me, um, collaborations are always about uh, learning something new um, for me and, and trying to get out of the comfort zone and also um, connection. You know, um, the, the album that I'm working on right now is all about connection. And I think connection is like a huge thing that we all kind of craved and, and wanted and needed during lockdown, during the pandemic. and um, collaborations to me is just like another perfect way to to connect and to be able to create something um, from somebody you know all the way on the other side of the world is just such a cool thing that we were not able to do you know back in the day and thanks to today's technology and and how far we've come um, it's so awesome to be able to uh, collaborate with uh, somebody and, and get uh, bring their vision to life. So I just want to say, you know, thank you to Luca for the opportunity to, to be able to do that. Well, I should thank you too, because without you, the song, it wouldn't exist again. <laughs> also, I, I'm just happy that uh, we got to connect in between ourselves, you know, because as I told you before, you, you are an amazing artist, an amazing person. I, I hope we can collab again in the future hopefully and I am looking forward to your uh, second chapter of the album because you know I've been following the production of it on socials and it just sounds terrific thanks man I appreciate that uh, if I may add that was my weakness um, oh, sorry go ahead. yeah if I may add uh, that that was the perfect thing, connection what we do here and what we do with collaboration and with this kind of music it's making meeting people, making friends, and doing the things that we love, that make us feel better in and in our lives outside of our music. That's, that was the best thing, beautiful thing. I don't think there's much to add to this thought. It's just perfect thought, so. Congrats on this album. You've been working really hard on it. And you are very passionate. And you are a very beautiful person. Sweet. <laughs> Again, it's beyond the emotions. It's also available on CD, physical CD. You can get that from Retro Reverb Records. We'll leave links in the description. And again, guys, any closing remarks, feel free. Take it away. All I can say is that it's just everything about this to me is exceptional because i'm what i mean is yes we, they're all amazing artists and from uh, the outside uh, what you see is all oh, the music is amazing or the show is amazing but you're really getting to know uh, them better via the process of creation of something makes you understand how passionate how amazing how good people actually are outside of the artist imaginary if uh, it makes sense what i'm saying and that is just mind-blowing and i i really feel lucky to have had the chance to experience this and to get this kind of understanding because before of this i was from the outside and maybe just a fan of their music their show and their work and it's a totally different perspective and i really really i like i said i i feel really really lucky for this and blessed so full of life so and now you're we're your fan too we're all your fans now <laughs> well coming from karin that's his big huh? that is really big <laughs> yes definitely i mean i remember um the first couple singles you had um as elixir 
Um, and then the album release, I think that was before uh, Retro Reaper Records, right? Before yes. you signed with them? Yeah, on your initial uh, album. I still Definitely. think they sound amateurish. <laughs> But I am myself worst critic, so I, I know people like them, at least some people like them, so I'm just happy for that. I know I did the best I could. Uh, it was my very first real production effort. So I'm, I'm actually shocked, that, happy and shocked that people actually like them. <laughs> That's the sign of a good artist right there, man. You just listen to your old stuff constantly and you're your own worst critic and then you just take that and you learn from it and build it with the next one and you know that's that's just every single artist out there we always listen to our old stuff and sometimes we're just like oh man i could have done better here could have done better there but that's uh that's art as a fan oh, yeah. that's heartbreaking to me because i'm like <laughs> oh that song that you did back in 26 i love that and they're like god i can't listen to that anymore yeah it, it happens sometimes <laughs> it's it's uh, um, one of my favorite musical um, artists, is, uh, he goes by Never Ending White Lights, nobody's ever heard of the guy, um, but he put it on a podcast the other day, I think it's a beautiful statement, and it's, uh, art is never finished, it's just abandoned. And that's something that I've had to learn recently, is like, with our music, we're never ever finished a song. It's just something we finally have to walk away from and say, that's it. I got the point across of what I'm trying to make and we've got to let it fly because I'm sure everyone can agree here that we could work on a song and continue to work on it for ages and years and never release it because we just always want to make it better. Yeah, that kind of was the, the whole point, uh, almost the whole point of that first album because I was like, uh, sure, 100% sure that people are going to hate this because it's just so bad compared to everyone else. So I almost didn't release it. And I, like I said, it was kind of a challenge in between my, myself, with myself to put it out and fight uh, my fear of rejection and see where I could uh, end up uh, going with the music. And that's the, really is the whole point why that first album exists. <laughs> and I have to say, it really gave me freedom uh, putting it out because after that i was like well i'm never going to do something that bad <laughs> so <laughs> i am super free now to work at ease on uh, um, much better music for sure <laughs> luca can i ask you did you like yeah. the music in the first album when you released it forget the, the, the technical side did you like the music yes I so did that's it. like the that's music. It. That's it. The other things are just don't matter. If you liked it, it's out. You are the first person that you need to be happy. And the others will come. I actually listened to it again some days ago and I was like, well, this is not that as bad as I remember. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, Dimi spoke. So, uh, yeah, that, that is it. When how can you contradict Dimi? You don't contradict Dimi. You say yes. No, 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 no. You contradict me. <laughs> of course, you, 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 please contradict me. But the truth is this: that if you enjoy your no, stuff, no, but you are you right. Are, yeah. No, if you enjoy the, your your music, then you cannot. Uh, we can. We all cannot uh, uh, believe that we know how the other people think. The the stuff that you release might be the best music for someone out there. Just like the, tr the track we worked on, I have different feelings on, on it. I would put it without guitars and release it on, it on its own because it had feeling from start to finish. It's like that. The, the only question you should ask to yourself when you make a track is, do I like this? Yes, release it. That's it. That's good. Very good advice, Demi. Sometimes people get over over they think it too much so full of, life. of course it's you know understandable but. yeah we need to leave our way, to leave behind our uh, insecurities which is the most difficult thing to do yeah because when we release something we'll have people saying if we have some people they will say it's good or bad it doesn't matter do you like it do i like my music what i release now if I do, I release it. In the future, of course, I'll come back and see that I, I did this mistake, my kick was bad, 
I shouldn't have that kind of arrangement and I think everyone thinks about that, yes, when they go back to their old stuff. Yeah, it's what happens now. Do you like it now? Yes. Let other people enjoy it too. Release it. Put it out there. That's my opinion. And that's why I think Lucas shouldn't feel bad about his music because his music is not bad at all. It's on the contrary. Until next time. No, no, I don't feel bad about the music. At the time, I was thinking it was super bad. Now, as I said, I listening to it again. It's not that bad as, as I thought. And but um, one thing is, yes, I am super critical on my own production. I think that is bad on the side because it, yes, it is kind of restraining. But I. At the same time, it also gives me a lot of motivation to work towards improving it for the future. So, for example, I'm I'm sure that if I didn't release uh, Looking for a Sound, uh, this new album uh, wouldn't exist. It's just the natural step. You always go forward, try and improve, uh, be critical about myself, but in a positive way so that you strive for improvement and do even better. At least that is my way of leaving my insecurity. <laughs> October 18th. Uh, can I ask something to Justin? It's been nearly two years. Uh, uh, yeah, absolutely. Do, do you have that thing that when you release something, then it's like you leveled up in your either your production or your composition or whatever? Is this happening to you too? That you yeah. create something, yeah, and then that, when that, you release it, that's the ultimate goal, absolutely. Um, but and kind of going back to what you were saying is, um, as selfish as it may sound, I I create to make music that I like first and foremost. Uh, something that um, my goal originally when I started creating uh, my music is I want to make an album that I haven't heard before by anybody else, but I've always wanted to hear. Um, and as long as I've set those goals and every album that I come out with or every collaboration that I do, every new music that I release has something that I learned from it, from that recording session, then that's the ultimate goal. And, and you know, everyone that listens to it is just a, an absolute 100% bonus in that whole situation. But if I'm happy with it, I'm excited about putting it out. Um, and, you know, I can go always go back and listen to it and say, ah, oh, man, I could have done that. Like you said, you know, uh, this was uh, this drum beat came in a little too early. And it, it's always stuff that only we hear as, as the producer of the music. And we obsess over it before we release it. Um, and then, you know, for a fact that 99 percent of the listeners don't even notice it. And you're sitting there obsessing. But yeah, the ultimate goal every time you create is to create something new and create something and learn uh, a new thing from that. If you are perfect and you have nothing else to learn, then, you know, it's time to retire. What's the point? Oh, yeah. Can I, I, I would like to add one last, very last thing, because today um, you are seeing me because we are talking about an album and I am the producer of it, the music, but Eric Sar is actually a two man team because it's me and my girlfriend. I really want to give some credit to her, even if she's not here in the video, because, um, okay, she is not doing the music, but she's always the person I have my music uh, heard and ask for suggestion if she feels anything. And she'll, so she is actually very active in the music production uh, part of the project and also, she is doing all of the cover art because this album has 12 songs that makes 13 different cover arts. So we are uh, we actually have one different cover art for every single song plus one for the whole album and i really think she made such an amazing job putting uh, in a visual form what the songs are about that I really, really wanted to give some credit for that because I think it's very, very, very important the work she did in this and that she will also do on the future ones. That's awesome. Yep, that's why the, um, in your Elixir name, LNA, right? That represents, yes. Yes, yep. I remember you telling me that. Mm. Yeah, the cover art's always been awesome, I have to say, as well, too. I've done some uh, from other artists as well, but I, I always like how yours come out 
always something new, always something different with each track, each album. Definitely a big uh, difference. That's what brought me to the first one too, searching for the sound. I remember seeing the, reminded me almost like a like a video game uh, cover or something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we decided to go for a pretty funny illustration for that one. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. Okay, guys, again, uh, Beyond the Emotions by Elixir. It's out on Retro Reverb Records. I'll leave a description. Uh, I'll leave a link in the description box. You can check it out. CDs are available at the time, or will be available. Hopefully they don't sell out by the time this gets put out. Um, again, guys, thank you. To the stars we return, Karin, Timmy, Luca, I really appreciate it. It's been thank a great time, guys. Thank you all for guys. being here. And thank you, guys. Thanks for thank having you. us.
literally put me through You think I despise you But in the end, I wanna thank you Cause you made me that much stronger well, I
I've wanted so long. Yeah. 
Wasn't that the road up for Camp Crystal Lake back there? Uh, I think we better stop.